In the past, I've played quite a few Columbia Block War games, and some more, some less, to a different extent, I really enjoyed them all. Um, so I was really excited when recently I got the opportunity of trying and reviewing the latest release, Julius Caesar. Also, I'm very interested in the theme, uh, because I'm a scholar of Italian history, literature and culture, and this is about the civil war between Caesar and Pompey. If you've seen the first season of HBO's Rome, that is what this game is about. So, series I'm interested in, theme is interesting, this game really came full of promises. Well, they did manage to keep them all. Well, let's take a look and then we will see. Julius Caesar is a block war game, which means it will come with a big bag full of wooden blocks representing the units that he will be bringing into battle. Um, these blocks with the units on allow for two interesting things. One is a certain degree of fog of war, because the block will be facing the owning player and the other player will be trying to guess what the unit is exactly. That effect is a very simple, very elegant way of keeping track of the strengths of the unit. This unit, for example, has a strength of 2, takes a hit, you flip it, goes to 1. This unit receives some reinforcements, you flip it back and goes to 2. And that applies to all uh, block war games. Component-wise, the blocks of Julius Caesar are extremely nice. Well, first look at them. They look like counters that have been clipped on the corners, which is very cute. They are thick which is very important because it prevents them to a certain extent from falling over accidentally. Again, very important since according to the way they're standing on the table, they indicate a different level of strength. The illustrations are excellent. Uh, they're very detailed. Uh, the units have illustrations that are very different from one another. Look at Cleopatra, you can even appreciate the unique shape of her nose, which really is a considerable level of detail. Um, the colors are not just solid colors, they have shadowing all around, so they are really nice, they're really nice pieces to play with. Um, Component-wise, these blocks, uh, they take an A-plus from me, no doubt. In Julius Caesars, the actions of the players are dictated by the cards that they will be playing each turn. The most common card is the Command card. Each of these cards has two relevant pieces of information. One is the number of groups that can be moved that turn, and the other one is the number of levies, that is, of reinforcements, that will join the army of the player. As you can see, different cards have different combinations of values. Um, usually the cards are well balanced. If you move a lot, then you don't get many reinforcements. If you don't move much, then you get a lot of people joining your army. Now, some cards are still a little more powerful or less powerful than others, but overall the deck seems pretty well balanced and I don't think it will ever happen that you will receive a hand which is completely useless or absolutely invincible. Another type of card is the God card, and I'm sure that this will bother several people, several purists that will not appreciate intervention of the ancient gods in the civil war. Um, Another problem, an apparent problem, I must say, is that some of these cards might seem overpowerful at first, or maybe even to the point of throwing the game out of balance. Um, Jupiter, for example, allows you to steal some units from the other army, uh, or Vulcan allows you to deal quite a substantial amount of damage to the enemy, Mars makes for a brutal attack, things like that. However, we must keep in mind that in order to execute the special action on the God card, the player has to take the entire turn. So you don't get to move anyone, you don't get any new people joining your army, and so I would say that this overall does preserve the balance of the game. This is a general view of the map of Julius Caesar. Uh, the graphics are simple, but uh, nice enough. The map is extremely functional, it gets the job done really well. There is no ambiguity on the map whatsoever in regard of uh, roads, cities, seas, borders, connections. Um, you won't have any problem coming from the map during the game. It is such a simple map and yet each area presents different characteristics that will make the game different. Spain, for example, has a thick net of very small roads. It offers a lot of possibilities for maneuver. It's possible that armies that get to fight there, they start trying to outmaneuver each other, surround each other, but they will have to break down in smaller units in order to be able 
to move along these roads and then they will probably plan to to reform regroup somewhere else but the other opponent the other player might be able to do that before it's gonna be a fantastic challenge happening here meanwhile armies fighting in north africa will have a very different problem which is that of dealing with only one road in fact where where like an enemy army would be able to obstruct them just by staying there so you will have cat and mouse in spain and you're just like pounding at each other sheer brutal violence to go through the enemy lines in africa Nothing in this game ever feels automatic or dull. Everything comes from a choice and usually from a tough one. Uh, take the reinforcements for example. You can choose to bring in auxiliary troops, which are fairly weak, but they can be mustered anywhere on the board, so great flexibility there. Or you can go for much more powerful units that, however, need to be recruited in the city that is written on the block. So you need already to have somebody there in that city before you can actually take control of these units. So here's the choice. You are there in Alexandria. You can just take easy control of a generic unit there. Or you can go out of your way, send the navies to Crete and recruit the Crete's elite and then maybe next turn move to Athens and recruit the elite from Athens. And that really adds an interesting level of strategy because most of the time you will be trying to find the balance between reaching your immediate objectives, which might be take control of a certain city, defend an area, and then your long-term objectives of recruiting good troops and putting them together in a powerful army and then the extra problem of sending that army where it is most needed. Another level of fun and death is added when players realize and start using the power of the navy. If you take control of the seas, which in certain circumstances might be much harder than making it sound right now, um, you can create chains of communication that will allow you to move your units across the sea like at an uncanny speed. In one move, you may have Caesar here in northern Italy, and then going through this chain, the following turn, boom, he's there at the gates of Alexandria, threatening to capture Cleopatra. Um, and I guess that I chose this example because at the core I am a romantic. Um, either way, the mobility allowed by the Navy is really amazing. It will change the game at each turn. It will force people to get in the Navy just to stop other people's navies. It might move a front from one side of the map to the other. It can create also unpredictable situations. It will blow your mind. By this point, you probably have already figured out what my opinion about Julius Caesar is. At the beginning, I thought maybe in this review at some point I should do like some dance or some performance art because I'm not sure that just by words and in the limited time of a review, I can convey how good this game is. Judas Caesar is a true rare gem. It has everything you, you, you may ask from a game. It is simple and deep. It is accessible. It is fun. It is challenging. A lot of things happen that you never expected. You had the impression that you have mastered the game, like the map doesn't have many spaces, there are many pieces. You're like, oh, I found the formula. And then another player does one move that leaves you like staring at the board with your mouth wide open, asking yourself, how could that happen? That will happen all the time. The game is so surprising, it's so lively, so rich. The back and forth, it's incredibly fast. It moves fast, it plays fast. You can probably, uh, you will be able to probably play it in like two hours once you, everybody knows really what they're doing. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but you might be able to squeeze two games in a night. And maybe also because of this, that it just plays fast, you always feel like, ah, can, why don't we play another game? Eh, just one more, just one turn more. It is phenomenally addictive too. Certainly, it's again one of the most addictive games that I've seen. Um, everybody played it with by the middle of the second turn they were surprised like I was the first time that this game can achieve so much from so little such simple things such simple components and rules it can do so much I played it a lot I'm planning to play until I drop and I'm really happy to report that 
yes, Colombia has given us a true, true winner.